guys, Don Young from 1331 Studios here. It's 7 in the morning. I've tried to record this video like five times now. But uh, I'm here to show you how to live stream using OBS. Or maybe show you a couple tricks that you haven't seen before. Or maybe show you a workaround for uh, a couple things that you can't quite get working correctly. Uh, we'll start off with just the things you're going to need to do this. So the first thing you're going to need is Sound Siphon. And you can just grab the demo. You don't really need it for the purchase. Like, you basically only need the demo version to get everything you need working. So don't bother purchasing it. Just grab the demo. Uh, once you download that, it will get you to do a whole install process instead of an app drop. Uh, install it. And once you have it installed, go into your system preferences. Open up your sound. Open up your output, set it to sound siphon out, open up your input, set it to sound siphon in. If you have any audio issues with anything in the future, just set them back to default. Uh, but this is how you have to have it set up in order to live stream. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is a cam twist. I'm pretty sure 3.0 works just fine. I wouldn't go with the beta just in case it has issues. Uh, 3.0 should work just fine for you. So go ahead and grab Cam Twist. And uh, is it still running? No. I'll go ahead and run that real quick. Oh, it's got to boot up my PlayStation. Whatever. So we'll let that run in the background. So you go ahead and download that. And once you download it, you open it up. Like a so. Yes, sir. Go into view. Well, actually, before you go into view, go into preferences. Make sure this is, well, I guess it depends on how strong your computer is, but for just for test sake, you can ramp it up later if you want to. Just for testing sake, just set it to 30. Make sure this is set to 720 and enable the siphon server. Make sure that's enabled. It's very important. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do, you're going to go up to view. You're going to go main window if it hasn't already opened it for you. And I have it saved, but I'll show you what the save is. So go desktop plus. Uh, go to confine to an app window. And then go like that. Boom. And now, because I don't like resizing things in OBS, because it makes OBS do more processing than it has to, what I'll do is I'll resize it here instead. So go ahead and resize that. You don't have to, but it's just the way I prefer to do it. And then just hit Done Resizing. And then once you're done with that, it'll select that as the main window as a, like, cam twist and if you're wondering what cam twist is doing it's sort of like mirroring the display so it's creating a camera out of this but we're not going to be using that part because it uses a shit ton of cpu usage so now after all that's open you're going to go ahead and open up obs see as you can see, I already got some stuff running. Uh, I don't know why uh, this is acting like this. Um, oh, because I never resized it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to remove all three of these because I uh, shot a whole video earlier, but I messed up. Or I didn't really mess up. I just didn't like the outcome or the way I, in order I explained things. So I just went and redid it. Okay. So once you boot up OBS... This should be what you see, or, well, actually, what you'll see is scene, and it'll have an open space here, but because I already have a bunch of scenes made, uh, just for messing around's sake, uh, I'll just make and use this new one that I already did uh, up for this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go capture audio output source, and then go ahead and set that to sound siphon in, and boom. So now you'll notice... When I hit the controller, there are waveforms in the audio output capture. So there's that. But also, what's a bonus with that as well, if I go ahead and open up iTunes, open up iTunes, possibly open up iTunes. Are we going to open up iTunes? Okay, we're opening up iTunes. And I play a track. It will also get played through uh, OBS as well. So that's cool. Uh, you can adjust the volume vis-a-vis -vis the apps. 
themselves or at least that's how I do it and you can also adjust like the overall intake over here and uh, you can also do some different things with the audio like oh shit I went to the wrong thing so there you want to go to filters you can add a noise gate which I've done for the mic so it just doesn't pick up dead air and uh, you can also do a uh, gain to make it a bit louder just in case your mic's a little bit too quiet so anyways that's your audio all set up uh, and made so that you can stream music if you want to just simply open up your iTunes uh, the next thing we're gonna do is game capture so you're probably wondering how we're gonna do this well you're gonna go to game capture siphon and you're gonna go, oh well, well siphon yeah it's crazy but we're gonna do that and we're gonna go launch siphon inject and now Siphon Inject normally only works with open uh, LG or OG. I, it's seven. It, it's fucking so early. I can't remember. But it, it only works with open OG or whatever it is. LG, OL. Uh, so most things won't work with. So if I tried to say capture my PS4 remote play and I injected, it won't pick it up. But if I inject cam twist, which I've already done as you can see, It'll pick that up, and because I turned on the server, boom, it'll pick that up as well, send it straight through with zero lag. If you do either the windowed or display capture, it has a lot of like latency to it, and if you do, say, go out like this, and, go, yeah. and if you do it, say, like, video capture device. cam twist and if you do it like this it uses up a shit ton of cpu usage so by doing it through the game siphon server you're saving yourself a little bit of cpu that way and you don't have to worry about it getting overloaded too too easily so just do it like that it adds a little bit of latency i think or it actually might even reduce it it looks like it's a little bit less but either way this works great this is what i've been using and then the last thing you got to do, well, you don't have to do this, but I've been doing it. This is the whole reason that instead of streaming my PS4 uh, directly to YouTube and stuff, I'd prefer to stream it here and then, you know, go over there. Uh, you know, face cam. If you want to do yourself face cam and do that up right nice. Go up. Oh, look at me. I look like a fucking just got up. Yay. I'm a loser. It's fun stuff. Uh, go ahead and drag that up like that. If you want to fit it right in your frame, go in and go transform, go edit transform. I already know what the specs and measurement to mine are because I've done it a bajillion times. I just put in 350 and that usually gives me about what I want for framing. And then that's good. And yeah, so that's everything in terms of like what you do for setting it up now i'm going to move on to settings and things that you can do as well um just for test sake and making sure that it works so what i did is i scaled everything down from what is initially 1080p to uh 720 and then that way it didn't have to scale or do anything itself uh because i find that you know the higher you go the more data you need the more cpu usage you need and really people don't when they're streaming anyway don't really pay attention that much to uh the, the frame rate as much as they would if they were say playing the game because they're paying more attention to like the commentary and like maybe you know other things going on it is you know arguable that frame rate's a big deal and i would say it kind of is but you know, 30 is not going to hurt anybody. It's not going to end the world. Um, uh, I usually use 4,000 or 3,500, but I was messing around with some stuff today. So I turned it down a little bit while I was messing with everything. Uh, I also don't know if the profile made any difference as well. Uh, I also run this usually at super fast. But again, I was just messing around with Twitch today. But uh, the main thing I want you to take away from all of this is scale everything down to 720 and run it at 30 frames. Uh, I know people make a big deal out of 1080p, 60 frames, whatever. It's it's not going to really kill anybody to run it this way. So it, it should be fine. Uh, and that's it for that setup. Oh, and also, if you have uh, like a microphone you want specifically detected, go into audio and change it here. Um, 
whatever one you want picked. I'm currently detected as a USB audio codec, but whatever, we'll take that and we'll use it. So that's everything for the setup inside of OBS. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the ability to not only stream, but game capture without a capture card. Now, this isn't my idea. I got to thank Harris Gaming for this one. But uh, what you do and what I've been doing, and it, I mean, it's not the greatest fidelity or anything, but it's it's cheaper than buying a fucking $200 capture card. Uh, which I do have an old Hapog, but when my friend showed me this, I was like, why spend the money when you can just do this? So what you do, uh, once, well, now that they've released the apps, they have both an Xbox One and a PS4, like, app in which you can stream your console to. And, uh, you stream your console to the thing, uh, wherever it might be, and you capture the display basically the same way that I showed you before. Or you can do what I do sometimes and use my screen recorder just to cap and record videos that I save or whatever. There's a commodity of different ways you can use the streaming and capture stuff all together in one place, which is really, really cool. And I suggest if you don't have $200 to drop on a capture card and you really want to get into, say, live streaming or, um, uh, you know, just making YouTube videos, this is a really, really cheap and effective way to start. Uh... It's kind of hard to do streaming and this because it takes up a shit ton of bandwidth. I think with the current settings that I'm running, because I don't have a PS4 Pro, uh, I don't know if it'll let me see them yet. Yeah, it won't let me see the preferences. I guess I can shut this off and just show you the preferences. With the current preferences I have set up, it said that I needed about 5 megabytes. So if I do 720p at high quality, which I'm assuming is anywhere from like 30 to... 45 frames uh you know because i doubt it could push 60 frames out to a streaming service uh i find i need about five megabytes or that's what it told me i don't know if that's true i would say maybe a little bit less than that uh so if you want to stream you really need a lot of data or uh, not data but you need a lot of speed i have like 50 down and 15 up or something like that so i have a i have a pretty decent setup where i am and i like it a lot <laughs> but uh yeah uh that's pretty much everything i want to talk about in today's video thank you for watching if uh this helped you learn anything leave a like because apparently likes go a long way towards like getting exposure and like i normally don't really care and i still kind of don't but it'd be nice just for once to ask for them uh, i'm dalton young 1331 studios saying why don't you start live streaming today